Recorded interview of Nicole Kessinger on the 15th of August 2018. Collected on the 15th of August 2018 at 5:36 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Collected by Philip O. Jones. Elsa evidence type: non-custodial interview. Special Agent Philip Jones. Today's date is August 15th, 2018. Interviewing uh, Nicole Kessinger with uh, Mark Blair. Hi, well, Jones. Nice to meet you. Probably needs to get a little sweetheart out of him, so that's why I know. What's his name? Yeah. Bud. Duke? 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 He's one of my direct co-workers. He just like works kind of in passing in the same office building as me. I met him. I don't know. Probably around the beginning of June, maybe yeah. before that. Um, and we kind of talked in passing, and then started to get to know each other. We started hanging out pretty frequently around. I want to say like the last week of June, somewhere around there. Um, and have continued to talk until then. Um, he informed me that he did have two kids. I knew that he had two daughters. Um, he also told me that he was currently in the process of a separation from his wife. Um, and so, are there mosquitoes on you? <laughs> that, um, he's in, he was in the process of a separation from his wife. And as far as I knew, that was becoming pretty finalized. Um, and then Monday afternoon, he told me that she was, like, gone and he didn't know where she was. And at that point, I don't think that it set off any alarms in my head just because, I mean, I've... I have friends that I text, and if I don't hear from them for like three hours or six hours or even like a couple days, I don't feel concerned about where they're at because it's kind of a standard thing for me. Um, but then she didn't come home that night. I was like, okay, well, maybe she'll come back. And I was kind of under the impression since they're separating that maybe she decided to take the kids. Maybe she decided to just leave for a few days. I don't know. I was just, I, I, I felt like maybe she was just trying to get some space. And I figured maybe that was why she left her stuff there to just get some quiet. Um, and then yesterday rolled around and she's still not around. Um, and that started to seem really concerning for me that people still don't know where she is. Um, and they don't know where those little girls are. And, um, at that point, I was like, you know what? I I hope something did not happen to her and did not happen to her children. And that was when I decided that it's probably a good idea to just come talk to you guys and just let you know that I've been spending time with Chris. And that that's as far as this guy. So I just, that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So... So prior to June, did you know him? Did you guys have any, did you know him, any relationship, any, didn't know him at all? No, I didn't you know him at all. Met at work in, in June? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the company you guys both work for? We both work for, well, I'm a contractor, so tech don't work for the same company, but we both work for a company called Andarco Petroleum Corporation. Like, we're in the same building at the same time. So we don't actually, like, work together. It's literally like a, I see him in the hallway and pass kind of thing. It's not even... And then what, what do you do with your position? Uh, I do in health safety environment, so, so HSE. Okay. And you're still currently working? Yes, sir. And then, so you guys met. Did you start communicating uh, you know, via email, text, phone messages? How did, how did sort of relationship develop? So we started talking through text message and through phone calls. Mm -hmm. um, okay. 
Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> that's how it. I mean, that's how it started. Sure. Okay. And then, did the relationship develop beyond the friendship? Yes. Okay. And then, did he say anything to you about what where he thought the relationship was going to be going, or what he was hoping for for the future? I think that he was looking for a relationship with me. Um, but I knew that he was in the process of a separation. So for me, I was kind of having a hard time with that where it's like, you know, cause he, he told me, Oh, we're putting the house up for sale. We're putting the house up for sale. Um, and I told him, you know, I'm not comfortable with, with considering my significant other and vice versa while you are still like in the midst of a divorce like i was like you know once you and her are finalized with the divorce i'm like once you and your kids have your new location that you wanted to move to set up once all of that is where it needs to be i'm like then you and me can talk about you know eventually like dating seriously and, and like building something with each other but i mean that was kind of the my standstill on that, and, you know, I, I I feel guilty that I should have like waited to, I guess, like initiate anything that we had together um, until after this divorce was finalized, as opposed to doing it while they were that's separated. It was like the, like the talk. Okay. So, and this is it's not uncommon. It's not good. We, we appreciate your support playing with us and telling us about this because it, it is significant. You know, we're trying to go through everything that we can as far as the investigation right now to figure out what happened or what's happening. So we appreciate you telling us about this. I know it's not easy to do. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit more than this? So you guys started talking and like when did it develop into more than just talking or just friendship? It was like the beginning of July. And then, uh, did you guys continue to see each other up until, uh, would it be Monday? I saw him on Saturday. That was the last time I saw him. Okay. Okay. And then, can you walk me through that on Saturday? Uh, like, did you guys meet? What was that? Um, so when we spent time together, I didn't really, like, go to his house. Like, we would spend time at my house. Um, he, uh, we went out to dinner. That's what we did. He said he had a babysitter. We had to wait for the babysitter. And we met up. I can get over Probably like five or six. And we actually, we tried to go to a restaurant down the street from my house. But I didn't like the menu. So we left. And then we went to another one. Like 144. It's called the Lazy Ball. And we went up there and we had dinner. And then uh, he came back to my house and hung out with me for probably like 15 minutes. And then he left because he said he had to go to the prison center. So he said, and that was Saturday? That was Saturday. That was the last time I saw him. Okay. okay. And did you guys, was there anything else uh, that you did? Just, was it just dinner? Did you go anyplace else to visit him? No, we just went to dinner. And that's one of the only times I've actually ever been out in public with him. But, yeah, just dinner. That's a lie, because they also went to the sand dunes in public and ate at a rooftop bar in public, all prior to Saturday at the Lazy Dog. And so for the most time in the past, uh, whenever you guys were together, it was at your, your house, it was in, like, going out somewhere? Typically not. I mean, we've done a few things, but not. Yeah. 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 And on Saturday, remember what the time frame was? I think it was probably like 5 to 10 ish. Yeah. Somewhere around there. And I don't even think it was 10. We had to be back by 10. So I think it was a little bit before that. I think it was like 9.30. But somewhere in there. And I remember it might have been like a little after 5, too. All I know is the babysitter was going to get there around that time. And we had to be back before 10. So give or take drive times. So kind of five hours ago. And when he came to your house, did you pick you up to your house? I don't or... really like ride in this car. I didn't have that, that white car they have once but other than that we take my truck everywhere always when you came to your house what vehicle was that ah uh, you know i didn't even pay attention to that but probably his i don't think he really takes the apc truck anywhere he doesn't have to 
Because usually he, when he comes see you, he the, the white vehicle. Yeah. Okay. And then when you guys went out, did you take your vehicle to go wherever you were going? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so you had dinner. Was there anything else? Any other discussion about these things? Nothing out of Did you talk about anything about his relationship with his, his wife? That come on? Nothing. No. I mean, I've been helping him trying to, like, find a new spot, so I'm sure we talked about, like, hey, because I know we were trying to set up a time this week to go, like, have him. He want, he was looking for a two-bedroom apartment. He wanted to get a, an apartment that was for him and his girl. And so sometimes, I mean, we talk about that recently because he's just like, i got to find a place. We were supposed to go look at some stuff this week. We were trying to get it set up um, before all this happened. Um so, I mean, like, a little bit of stuff, but it's never, like, directly him and his wife. It's typically, like, this is what's going on, and I'm just like, well, I will give you a helping hand if you're trying to find a spot. Like, I'll look at apartments for you guys, and, like, I would tell them, oh, I found an apartment that's, like, got a pool for your kiddos, and it's got a park for your kiddos, and it's close to work and close to the gym, and, and you know, I'm trying to make sure that he got a place that was close to where... Um, his ex-wife would be staying so that they were all, you know, essentially located to each other and just really trying to help him to get set up so that he could have a good working relationship with her, um, with the kids, and then he could be in a location that was, like, safe and essentially located and good for the kids themselves when we had them. And so that, I mean, just trying to, like, help him to, like, transition and then be a good dad and make sure that he's there. Do what he should do. And then after uh, Saturday, what was the next time? Oh, I talk to him all the time. He hasn't texted me today because I asked him yesterday not to, but if I was to text him right now, I bet he'd respond in like five minutes. And so, he has no idea that I'm talking to you guys. Nobody does. My dad is the only person that's in this loop. Like, mm -hmm. no one I know knows that I spent time with him. I don't think anybody he knows knows that I spent time with him. Like, besides the three people at this table, it's just him. Yeah. Another lie, Charlotte Nelson, Kessinger's friend knew about her and Chris. Nobody, no co-workers, no friends. Nobody. Okay, are you, and are you confident that he didn't say anything to anybody about your relationship? I'm pretty positive he did not. Okay. So. And then, um, as far as texts and phone calls since Saturday, has anything been odd to you? Anything that he has said or written that strikes you as being strange or not truthful or... no. well so i talked to him on sunday night and he was fine on sunday night i didn't have any issues with him um and then monday i think we shot each other like a couple texts at work but him and i get real busy both of us do at work so it was just kind of like and it was like just a mundane bullshit conversation you know um and then monday afternoon i came home from work and I was actually I had a friend over my house um, who is not involved or knows anything about this at all. But like I, I went to meet up with a friend, and then uh, he kept he texted me and told me something along the lines of like my wife and my kids aren't home, and I was just like okay. And that, then that was he, that was on Monday. It was on Monday. Do you know what time it was? Uh, honestly, I'm kind of upset with him right now. Just disappointed with him. So I. Uh, but um probably realistically i'll tell you it happened like right after i walked in the door to meet up with my friend and i let me see so monday i got off of work at 3 p.m takes me probably like 40 minutes to get home and i had just walked in the door so how about 3 45 that's probably about right okay and so he he sent that then and I was, like, really confused, but I wasn't concerned at that point because it was just, like, you mean she's not home? Like, she at the grocery store? I mean, it was just, it was, like, all right. I didn't realize, like, the seriousness of the situation at that point. Um, but, no, she didn't come home that night. And then uh, I talked to him that night, too. And he really didn't seem like... I mean, he was, like, concerned about his kids, definitely, but he didn't seem like he was 
at that point worried that something horrible had happened. He was just kind of like, I don't know where they're at. It's stressing me out. And I, I mean, and I could hear it in his voice. Like he sounded kind of scared. Like he was just worried about them. You know, it's like, I don't know where she is. Like, I don't know what to do with stuff. I mean, so he was, he was worried, but it wasn't, bad. I mean, worried. Like I think somebody would sound if somebody they loved was not at home. You know, but at the same time, I think at that point, he was convinced, I was convinced that she probably just left the day. Like, I really thought, I was like, you know what, I bet she just needed a break from him, and she needs some quiet, and she probably took the kids, and she'll be back in like a day. That's kind of, like, how I had it in my head. So, did he say anything to you about whether anything was missing from the house, not missing, if there's signs of anything, or suspicious? If he, he just said that she left. Or he, did, he didn't know where she was. He didn't know where she was. He didn't say she left. He's just like, I don't know where she's she at. And the kids as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, and I think he sounded genuinely concerned. I mean, those are his kids. And from the impression that I get, he's a great dad. I mean, he's all about them. He loves those little girls. And so, you know, for me, I, like I could tell when I could like hear it in his voice that he sounded concerned. It was just like those little girls. I'm sure, you know, and and I think he's just worried about the whole situation. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, or uh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then since, uh, so since that, since on Monday, uh, have there been, have you spoke to him on the phone, or has it just been text messages or calls? Or... I think, yeah, I did not talk to him on the phone, so it was yesterday. Um, you, you, wait, I'm sorry, you did or you did? I did not. I, we texted each other yesterday, but there was no, like, phone conversation yesterday. Okay. For Monday, it was on the phone? Yeah, at Please. night, like, at the end of the night, I talked to him. I just remember being, like, really tired and I couldn't go to bed, but I was just, like, trying to make sure he was okay, trying to make sure his family was okay, asking him, like, if he heard anything. I think we talked twice. Like, I think we talked over there. Did, it, did anything jump out at you in that conversation? Did he say anything to you about anything you and him? Like anything had changed or did anything was different now? Nothing not at all. Um, no. Okay, so just seemed concerned and just uh, yeah, was like late. worried. You know, I mean, I was worried too. I just didn't. I I thought she just left her day. That's really what I thought. And then again, like yesterday, when she just like didn't come home, I was like, oh, maybe this is like something really serious. And and again, I mean, like with my friends, it wouldn't be something that would draw attention if I didn't talk to them immediately. And I knew that they were going through separation, so the fact that one person is leaving for maybe a day. That doesn't seem out of the ordinary for me to somebody who wants to. The fact that all of her stuff was still there, though, that seems kind of strange. Okay. And did he tell you about anything that was going on with, with her as far as was she seeing anybody here or was there? Uh, had she talked about plans of what she was going to do, what she was going to move, or she was going to go someplace else? As far as I knew, um, he kept it pretty short and sweet. He was like, when he, if she ever came up in conversation, he was very like civil about her. Like he never had anything like negative or derogatory to say about her. He just told me, you know, we're separating. This is why. And that was about it. And then when. Did, did he say why? Did he say what his. What his reason was? Reason was for separating. He just said that they like really didn't connect very well anymore, and um, I don't know. I think financially they had like different ideas of how they wanted to live their lives. So I mean, but he never. I mean, just wasn't like negative about her, you know. And it was something that was pretty removed from our our what we had going on. So you know, um, and I know she's a good mom. So she's a good mom. But, but, no, I mean, I think, I think did, did he ever say, say that he wasn't in love with her or anything like that? Or, no. okay. Was he in love with you? Did he I tell guess. you? He was. Okay. Yeah, no, Were you in love with him? 
I think it could have gotten there had things played out like in a decent manner, but they're not because this is a horrible situation and I don't know where she's at and it's really concerning me that this woman and her children cannot be located. It's it's not okay. It scares me and I'm worried for all of them. Yeah, and we are too, and obviously we're going to get to the bottom of this. And, and that's, that's you know, some of the questions that I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask are just that's trying fine. to get to the bottom of this. Understandable. Yeah. And so when when he when he told you that he, he was in love with you, uh, did that, it was that, was that recent? Was that uh, right away? You know, was, was that like in July? Like, or? It was probably like a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And did he talk about you know, anything on top of it saying, you know, I'm in love with you now and that I want to have a life together and I don't want to be my wife? I mean, like, yeah, we talk about the future. I think all couples do talk about the future, but it was never like, hey, I'm like leaving her. But it was never like, hey, I'm like leaving her. I thought he was looking for an apartment to do exactly that. He told Kessinger apparently they were separating and getting a divorce. This statement shows me she knew he was still in a working marriage, not yet had the chat to Shanann. Shanann didn't know anything yet, apart from she knew he had changed and was thinking of separating. Kessinger knew this in my opinion. Hey, I'm like leaving her, we're gonna get a house together, you're moving in with me, it was never like this a like very forward thing and you know and i even told him i was like if we're going to build a relationship one thing is that if you're getting a divorce you've been married for a long time i think it would be wise for you to spend a lot of time on your own i was like and i pre i recently got out of a relationship earlier this year and i think it's also healthy for me to spend time on my own and i told him i was like you know like i i respect like monogamy situation, but like but um at the end of the day, it's like, you need space. And I would tell him that. It's like, you know, once you guys, all your paperwork's finalized and you guys have decided to separate. Once you guys have decided to separate. Again showing she knew it had not happened yet. Chris had not told Shanann and Kessinger knew this. And you're in your own spot with your kids. I was like, I think the days that you're with your kids, you need to be with them like full time. You know, I'm not ready to meet your children. He didn't even ask me to meet his children. I mean, not yet, you know, but I told him, I was like, in the future, eventually, if we get to that point where we think we're ready, yes, but I'm not ready to meet your kids. They're not ready to meet me. You're not ready to have me meet them. And I just tell him, you know, like, I think we should take our time. Like, ideally, I would only like to hang out with you, like, two years, you know, on the days that you don't meet and I was like, in the rest of those days, I was like, spend time with yourself, man. I was like, you've been in a relationship for a really long time. Like, just spend time, like, doing whatever it is that you do that makes you happy, you know? And 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 really try to, like, take a responsible approach to getting in a relationship with someone. Like, that is what I do. Is try to do me. Should I have waited until he was, like, officially, completely, 100% on paper divorce to move out of that house? Yeah, that's my mistake. But after that, everything going forward was really just really trying to, to, to do it in the manner that I thought would be the healthiest for him, for me, and his best, for his children, and his daughter. And now you already said that you have never met his children. Nope. Did you ever meet his wife? Nope. Were you ever at his house? What a liar. She was at his house twice that we know of. When was that? But it was. Probably the second week of July. Second day. Yeah. So it was just that one time? Just once. I had no desire to go over there. I mean, that's like situation where he's living with somebody that he's separated from. It's not my life. Like, that's their life, you know? And that's why I tell him, like, the time you spend with me, you spend at my house because this is our space, and that's not my space. And for me, I think it's really disrespectful to go over there. And so, um, we stopped by there once, like, on the way to my house. And I was there for maybe, like, 15 minutes. And I saw a picture of her holding her kid. She's so beautiful. 
people. And I remember thinking, like, God, you're the coolest people, too. And, um, and we laughed. And I remember telling him after that, it was like, have you ever thought about, like, really trying to fix your marriage with her? And he's like, I don't really want to. And I was just like, man, like, you got a beautiful wife. It's like, she's the mother of two of your kids. And I'm just like, you already have all of this stuff. Like, you already have the house and the car and the kids and the marriage and the wife. And I'm like, are you sure you don't want to fix that? I'm like, because what if you, like, try to start over with somebody else? And, like, what if, hypothetically, like, you didn't work out? Or, or you know what I'm saying? Or, like, just any of that. Where it's like, you should at least give her the benefit of the doubt. You know, and he told me, like, I've tried to talk to her about all this stuff a few times, and it's just not working out. And I'm like, all right, you know, I mean, if you, if you're trying to separate from her and it's pretty finalized, then I will respect that. But I mean, just being in that house made me feel like he should, he should just try to fix it. Like, I actually, like, kind of stepped away from him for a little while and just kind of like, maybe, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't sure if I wanted to, like, carry on because I really with him because I really wanted him to try to fix stuff and then you know he just kind of says to me like there's no fixing it so all right so we're just gonna go where we left off um but yes yeah, so once one time ago okay and is that that was so that was in the middle of July yeah right. I think it was like the second I think it was the second weekend of July and then we're fine was the relationship in by that time yes it was okay okay and then as far as his work truck goes were you ever in his work truck I just know which one it is, but I've never been never. in it. And then I think I asked you this, but the white vehicle. I know he drove that. But were you ever in that white vehicle? Yeah. One yeah. time? Okay. Can you just tell me about that? I'm trying to figure out where we went. I think it was like something cool. We take my truck everywhere. It was a while ago. I don't remember where it was at. Like, I think it was something quick. Like, I think he had to, like, run an errand or something at, like, the blow for you. He was just, like, like his vehicle. But we, other than that, like, never. I was always in my truck. If I can remember, like, when that was, I'll let you know. But it, like, wasn't anything like we were going on a date. It wasn't, like, it was, like, nothing. I think it was, like, a quick trip to go somewhere. It was just, like, hey, I'll drive okay. That's actually going to be another question. Have you guys ever gone on vacation together? Or yep. Or we went to the sand dunes. Like, it was pretty recent. A couple of weeks ago. How'd that go? How, how long the trip was that? Uh, we went for like a good day. We left Saturday. We went back on Sunday. We stayed one night out there. And uh, do, you, do you think that uh, or did, his, did anybody know that you guys were going on that trip together? Uh, I think a lot of people knew, but they didn't know who it was with. So on your side or on his no, okay. nobody on my side. I mean, people knew I was going to Sand Dunes, but my friends don't question that. I was just, I'm going to Sand Dunes for the weekend. And then, um, I'm pretty sure, I asked him, I was like, does anybody know you're going to Sand Dunes? And he said yes. But he, I don't think he told me it was me with me. I think he told me it was just some other people. So. Yeah. So you, and you're pretty confident that he didn't mention you? I don't you think anybody in his life knows though. I really don't. Like at all. Mm-hmm. Like I'd be willing to like say like a hundred percent. I highly doubt anybody else. I just don't see it. What about social media? Any I don't have it. Yes. You don't have any social media? I have nothing. So there was no interaction with like Facebook Messenger? Nope. Like I don't have Facebook. I don't I have nothing. I literally have nothing. I have an email. I mean it was for like general purposes, but we never even emailed. I have I don't have any social media. I haven't for a long time. I I recently deleted my LinkedIn, but that was like, yeah, and I have had Facebook or since like 2016, I've never had like Twitter and Instagram. So, so. What about mail? Any type of letters or you know, written communications that have been written by your mom's letters or anything saying? Yeah. I got a card from him. Card? Anything in that that is uh, different? stands out. I mean, it was, like, kind of sappy, but it was not, like, anything out of the ordinary for people that are dating. It was a birthday card. I mean, uh, I know he was going to the gym and stuff, but he got into working out. He was working out of his house. 
you work on mosquitoes are bad. I'm sorry, I, I got bit here too, so <laughs> yeah. So we're both getting bit up a little bit. Um, so, so I obviously you work out. Okay. So you guys work out together? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone to the gym. Yeah. No. I go to my gym and I he works out. And I'm like, Chris, like, you need to not worry about me right now. Like, what you need to worry about is your family. I'm like, all four of them. And I kept saying that, like, all four of them. And I'm just like, I know that's your child. I'm like, and that's okay. I'm like, you need to put all of your energy right now into focusing on owning them and not anywhere else. You know, and then he finally came clean and he was like, yeah, it's mine. And I knew. It's like, I, of course you knew. Like, you know, come on, how would you not know that your wife is like, what is it? four months pregnant i mean seriously so but he so he told me and i just um i don't know i've never honest like i have never felt like he's lied to me i've always felt like he's been pretty upfront with me this entire time and then after that happened yesterday between him lying to me or coming clean about lying to me and then um his wife not coming home I was like you know what I wonder if there's more to this story than I know you know and it's really hard for me to process this because I think he's a really good guy and you know I'm worried about his wife and kids like really worried about his wife and kids like I don't know where they are you don't know where they are nobody knows where they're at and it's just freaking me out because those little girls are like they're so little and she's pregnant, you know, and it's like, where's their mom? Where are these babies? And it just, it makes me sad. And, and it's just this whole combination of like, she's still not back. And then him lying to me. And I'm just like, I don't, I just felt like I needed to talk to you guys and tell you guys, like, I'm concerned. I'll help you any way that you guys need help. I just, I don't. Well, and that, that may be something that we ask of you at some point. Uh, you know that there, there obviously is things that you could that you could help with. I mean, 
and I don't know how many people who he's comfortable speaking with, but um, as you said at the beginning, you can text it, but they can get an answer in five minutes. So that, that may be something that we, uh, we could use some help on. You guys you, can keep my name out of the newspapers for a little while, it'd be nice. Yeah, well, Keep my name out of the newspapers for a little while, that would be nice. What? Why at this point of this interview where Shanann and the girls are only deemed as missing would Kessinger know her name would go in the newspapers? Well, our report gets filed internally. We don't turn that over to the news. So yeah. we'll have to see how this case goes. Well, the future I understand. But... Do you, do you, can you now looking back, you know, knowing that lies to you about his wife being pregnant, is there anything else that you can think of that, that you lied about? I know, mean, or that now jumps out at you and say, wait a minute, he told me this, but maybe that's not true. I mean, not really. I, I still, like, I took everything he said to me at face value. I try to do that for everybody. I mean, unless you guys know something, I don't know. Um, but that's like the truth that I have been given. So that's like what I know, you know, and I, I, I don't want to go back and like second guess like all of that because to me, it seemed real. It still does. This whole, this whole situation doesn't seem real, but at the time it was just like, I'm separating from her. This is what's going on, you know, and he seemed like he was pretty proactive about, you know, like trying to get in the spot and like trying to get everything set up. About that, you know, like I remember we were talking about it. I was like, because I was like, Are you gonna get two bedroom or a three bedroom? And he's like, I wanted two. I'm like, Why don't you get a three? And then each one of your girls can have a room. And he's like, I can't afford that. And I was like, All right. And then he was like, I'm gonna do two bedroom. And then I remember telling him, like, Oh, me and my sister have bunk beds when we were little kids. It's kind of cool. They might like it. And he was just like, All right, you know. And so I was like, kind of helping him with that. I was like, We'll go find something that'll be good and help you guys out. And then I was like, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, like, I tried. I really tried to, like, handle that whole relationship in the most, like, decent manner that I could, I guess you could say. So. Did, did he ever talk to you about his closest friends were confidence? Like, that funny? I mean, I know he has a few. His buddy Mark out in San Diego is a good friend of him. <laughs> and do, you, do you know his last name? Just it's just, I don't oh, ask. Fine. I have no reason to. Um, and then, uh, his buddy Nick, that I know lives somewhere over by me, I'm sure you guys know where he's all these people. Um, I think there's a lot of people working on this. I'm so. sure yeah. there is. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's about it. I mean, I'm sure he's offhandedly mentioned other people, but nothing. Like, sparks the memory. Just as far as you know, those crap, the names. Of I would say that those about. are probably like his two closest buddies. Did he have a lot of friends? I don't Male know. or female? I think so. I think there was like a lot of like couples that he and his wife hung out with. I mm -hmm. think so. He always went like toy like, parties and stuff with his kids, so I assume that he that way. Is he an outgoing guy yeah. or social or he's more of a private guy? I would consider him to be an introvert. I think around me, he opened up a little bit more. I think he just felt like he didn't play. It's just, it's kind of like a free relationship. It's not a good person. Like, strangely attached. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to judge him or I don't know if it was because I was like his little secret that he felt like he could trust me with stuff. But I think he was like pretty open with me usually. But I was secret. And then, how about hobbies, interests, anything? Um, cars. Cars? Is that yeah. Cars. Okay. Did, the, did the fitness thing, would you, would you consider that to be anything out of the ordinary? You know, some people are, are not in shape, they start to get in shape, and then it becomes an obsession. No, versus, I don't think he's... Or just a healthy, no, you know, I, physical... Was, that's exactly what it was. I did not mean to cut you off. No, no, no. No, it was healthy. I think it was, he was in a good spot and he was working out probably, I don't know, five days a week or so. And I knew he ate pretty healthy and, and, uh, I think he was happy with this fitness level. I wouldn't consider it anything like overly by any means. Like most people I know who go to the gym live clean eating and work out four or five days a week, pretty much like he was. So nothing strange to me. Okay. What about finances? Did you ever mention any kind of financial difficulty? A little bit. Was that, uh, you know, 
the strain of a marriage or spending too much money or credit card debt or what? What would you think that? He just said when they sold the house, I said, this is when he first started talking about putting the house up for sale. I was like, we're going to do another house right away. I was like, you guys, look, because the Colorado market's pretty high. It was just like, I think I'm going to move in an apartment and save up some money. And I was like, don't you like that money in the house? And he's like, that's what I just said. And then I'm going to save some money. Did he tell you that he said that? No, I think the realtor was supposed to come over and I thought they had a meeting with the realtor and the house was supposed to go up on money. Something to the effect of the house was pretty much supposed to go up for sale. This past Monday? So, this, yeah, like two days. He specifically said the house would go up for sale? He said it was supposed to. Or I don't know if it was that it was going up for sale or that he was talking to the realtor, but either way, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was something to the effect of like... Everything about to like start on Monday with their whole chance getting everything. Yeah. And he said that she was the one who found the realtor. Was there anything else that he said that was significant about Monday? You know, were they was he gonna move out? Was she gonna move out? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. It was just like we were gonna sell the house and he said that they were both looking for spots and I was like, Well, where is she gonna stay? And he was like you know, because I, I wanted him to be in close proximity to her after they split so that he was always like, like a quick drive to the kids. You know, I remember when I was young, my dad and my mom lived really far apart. And like, I still saw them both frequently, but it was just like, it was just kind of like a long drive for everybody. And I think just being that close proximity is like, it's just good. It's healthy for your kids. And so I remember asking him, like, you know where she's going to stay? And he's like, probably somewhere around this area. And he didn't give me anything exact. And then I asked him again, like, recently, because he started getting more serious about trying to find a place. And he was like, I think she's just going to stay in Frederick. And I was like, all right, you know. And then, like, one time, that first time when I was like, do you know where she's going to stay? And he's like, she's probably going to stay around here. And I'm like, is she going to stay in this house? And he's like, she can't put this house by herself. And I was like, all right. And that was the first time he told me, like, yeah, we're going to put it up. For sale, like once they could do that. Did he tell you what she does for a living? How she earns money? Kind of, sort of. I know she like works for some company that does like a lot of online stuff, and it's like fitness stuff or vitamin stuff. Or I'm not. I don't completely know exactly what that is, but I know she has to like network with a lot of people on social media to do it. So I'm not a hundred percent sure what you would call that, which I guess she's like a sales rep, kind of, sort of, to be what it was called, but that's what she does for it. Gotcha. Okay. How about, oh, did you ever see him with any weapons? Ever carry a knife or a gun or ever talk about weapons of any kind? No. And in fact, we even, like, so we talk about, like, current events. Like, it's a big thing in my life. I talk about current events with all of my friends. And I asked him one day, like, if you want, I will send you articles. Like, I'll read you every, like, once a week or so, I'll find an article that I think is interesting. It's about all sorts of different stuff. And I'll send it to one of my friends, and I'll be like, what do you think? And we'll have, like, debates and discussions about it. And I remember um, there was one on a shooting that I sent. And I was like, what do you think? He even told me, he's like, I don't own guns, I don't think I'm out. He's like, I think it's because we work in the oil industry, and a lot of, like, they're very red, red, red people, and they love guns. <laughs> he was just talking to me about it, and he's like, I don't understand why some of these people insist on that, like, and I know he was referring to, like, the group that we, like, work around, not necessarily our coworkers, but just, like, oil field people. He's like, I don't know why they insist. I'm having like 10 weapons. He's like, why could you possibly need that many guns? It doesn't even make sense to me. He's like, it's not necessary. And then he's just like, I don't keep guns in the house. Um, because that's what it's, that so that actually did come up once, but it was like, completely because we were having a Do you know if he was ever in the military? Not that I know of. And do you know where he's originally from? You have to talk about that, yeah. uh, up, up right there, and you know how that was. Any anything significant if you remember about that? Anything traumatic? Anything uh, that jumps out? Mm-hmm. Tony and mom and dad were still married, and he's really close with his dad. 
that's really the cards too. So they said that they really relate on that. Said there just wasn't a lot of opportunity in North Carolina, like for good jobs or anything around where he was at. And, uh, Get some friends. So friends moved out here, and him and her came and visited them, and they just really liked it. Thought there was a lot better jobs. And so that's why he moved. But no hostility back there. Good relationship with his family. Back yeah, family. definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I know he's got a sister, and she's got two kids. Is his sister in North Carolina? So, as far as I know, I know he went to go visit them recently, and he got a seat, I don't know if she's out there, you know, she lives there, but I think she lives there. Yeah. Did you talk about going back to North Carolina recently? Oh, yeah, I know he went. He's back. <laughs> okay. All right, so you knew, did you know uh, who he went with? Uh, he went by himself and met her out there. I know she was already out there. Is there anything else you can think of that uh, you think might be pertinent? I might be, you know, just looking into this? Not really. I mean, that's what I told his name, Dave. Mm -hmm. Dave. Dave. Yeah. I told Dave. It's like, you know, I think this is information. I don't know if it can, like, help you to solve anything. But it's like, I was a big part of his life recently, so I just figured that you guys should be aware of it. Definitely. You know, and I will cooperate with you on anything that you can. And he, so I asked him yesterday. So yeah, we can add this in there. Um, asked him yesterday to kind of like give me some space because I'm getting to the point with this situation where I am very concerned for his wife and children and this whole situation. I'm sure for everybody else who's involved with this situation. And um, after like finding out like, oh yeah, and like I've also got this child on the way with her and just wasn't very honest with me. I told him, please give me time to heal and please give me time to process this. And he's like, are we done? Are we done? And I told him, I said, no, we're not. Yes, we are. But he doesn't need to know that. I just told him that because I was just like trying to find a way to like distance myself from him without alerting him that I'm really uncomfortable with everything that's going on right now. Um, you know, I told him numerous times yesterday that I was scared. And, um, you know, I told him that I was scared, not because of, like, for, like, my own safety, but I told him, like, I'm scared because I don't know where she's at. I'm scared because, I, like, I'm scared for them. And then I told him, you know, the fact that you weren't honest with me, like, I don't feel like I know you as well as I did. And that, you know, that's uncomfortable for me, too. Like, this whole situation, it's just, it's scary. It's, it's not good. So, um, I just asked him if he could give me some space. And then I told him, I was like, when you find your family and they're all right, I was like, then you can go ahead and text me. I was like, but until then, like, I don't really think it's a good idea for me to talk to you. And that's as far as I've got. But I can tell you right now, if I were to text him and just say whatever I needed to say. So, I don't know. And I even asked him a few times yesterday. He's like, what happened? Like, where's your family? He's like, I don't know. It's like... I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, when he says he doesn't know, do you, do you believe that? I mean, I think about this situation, and honestly, like, I've never seen him be anything but gentle. And I see the way that he, like, <laughs> he gets so happy when he talks about his kids. And I just, you know, and the fact that he was, like, never ill-mannered, even when he was discussing her, and the fact that they were separating... I always considered him to be a really decent man, so the fact that they're still missing, I mean, I don't really think he would have harmed them. I don't. I mean, and I think that's also a reason that it took me two days to come to you guys, because it was like, I think she left. I mean, and that's still in the back of my head is like a thought where it's like, maybe she took off. I mean, maybe she did. Like I said, like he said, that obviously your financial situation wasn't that great. I'm like, well, maybe she just left because she didn't want to deal with it. Like, if we're over, like, you can deal with it. I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I've had so many different scenarios running through my head, but I don't think you can do it. And, and he didn't indicate to you that she was going to leave. 
did he ever say to you, like, one day she's going to be leaving, she's going to be going somewhere? Or... He told me they had a conversation in the morning. And he told me that she she came home, like, really late, I think, that night. And he told me that um, when he woke up, he said he was sleeping when he got back. And when he woke up, there was a text message from her that said, to, I don't know if it was a text, I don't know. But she just said she asked him to wake her up before he went to work. And I guess he went to wake her up, and she informed him that uh, the child that she was carrying did not belong to him. And I asked him if he believed that, and he said, no, I think she's just saying that out of spite. So I don't know if he's telling me that because he's trying to, like, somehow make him feel better that maybe it's not his kid because he lied to me, or if that, like, legitimately happened. I don't know. Um, but he told me that, and then I guess he, he said that she said that she he was going to, like, go to some friend's house or something, and I guess he tried to ask her about it a few times. It wasn't really getting anything from her, so I think he left. Um, but I don't think it was um, kids for two or four days. I think it was like just one at the end of the day. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Did he say if that discussion they had the morning if that was contentious, if there was any, anything said or any direct threatening or anything that was you know significant on that company? Not really, but I mean I'm sure finding out that the child that your wife is carrying is a boy is probably painful, but no, he didn't express anything on it. They were arguing. As far as I know, they didn't even really like argue that much in the first place. They just had different opinions on how to do stuff that just wasn't working on the marriage. But he was never like, oh, I fight with my wife all the time. Like, that would never, ever, ever be ever brought up at any point. Do you think he had any reason to believe that the child wasn't his? I mean, is there a possibility that she was seeing somebody? I mean, maybe she's at home all day, right? It would probably be pretty easy for her to have an affair. Um, I don't know. Nothing that he had to mention. Prior to that? Yeah. No. He never said, you know, I think she's having an affair or she's spent too much time with so-and-so. No, not at all. I don't even think he would notice. I mean, like, realistically, it's like, no one else knew about us. And she's home all day, so that frees up, like, that much more time. So, no. But, I mean, he could have been unaware. But, I mean, he even said, I think she said it out of spite. I don't, I don't even think he took that whole situation seriously. Mm -hmm. So, and then he did. He did admit to you that it was that it was his child. He believed it was his child. Later, because I kept asking him, I'm like, he's like, it's not mine, and I was like, how are you going to tell me that she just told you that she's having an affair, and you tell me you don't believe that she's really having an affair, but that the kid's not yours? I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me. And she's like, stop it, and not me. I thanked him for telling me the truth. I didn't want him to say all this, but I just wanted to take a step back and like look at this situation without like any like emotion, like positive emotion, like all the passion. Like at the end of the day, there's an entire there's a mother, two children, one on the way, like two and a half. That can't be done right now. And it's like I don't care about anything that's going on with me and him. I don't care about anything that's going on with him and me. I don't care about any of that. Like all I care about is helping you guys. It's amazing. Uh, one, most of the stuff that I saw was like just a phone. It was like a short excerpt, and then uh, today I saw one. What did you think of that? When they were interviewing him? Yeah. Is that is that the guy you know? <laughs> see, we don't know him, but obviously we do. So when you see somebody, when you see the manner, you know where they're talking, did that, did that strike you in your way? I mean, he's kind of got an introverted personality type, so like he's kind of like laid back with things in other ways. I think, I think, I feel like he's like doing his job with all of this. Like, just... I told you the night that I talked to him on the phone, like, uh, Friday night, like, he was calm, but you could just hear it in his voice, like, he was just, like, concerned from his kids. Like, I could hear it. Like, his voice was not a good thing. It's kind of similar like that, where it was, like, like, it, like you're trying to, like, hold back the tears in the game. Or hold back, like, when you're just bawling your eyes out on the phone or in front of a bunch of hands. I don't know. Just, 
But you think he's kind of an even skill type of guy? Always. Mild man. Always. Always. So he didn't, he didn't not, not highs and lows. He's not one of these people who gets upset quickly or gets depressed quick. You know, no, no. Even. I mean, and he has moments of, like, happiness. I mean, of course I see him when he's, like, happy and things are going on. But just in general, I think he's a pretty calm individual. Okay. And, and, and again, this is just anything you want to say or anything you think. <laughs> Do you have any theories? Do you have any thoughts? Of what I don't know how much stuff is running into my head. I know. I hate it. I don't even like theorizing. I'm like, I don't... I don't know. I really hope... What do I really think? I'm hoping that they have a lot more debt than he let on to. I'm hoping she didn't want to deal with it and she wanted to legitimately start a new life. And I hope that she just let me all that shit. That's what I'm hoping. Is there anything you want to ask? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's one of these things, too, is a lot of times what happens is after you have an interview like this, you might start thinking, you know, if you ask me this question or I just thought of something, feel free to give a call because usually you'll, people will think of something after the fact. You know, spending less than an hour at the park, uh, you might think, you know, what, in July, I remember he said this, or I remember this happened, you know, in early August. If any if any of that comes to your mind, just uh, just reach out to me, call, me. and uh, you know we appreciate any insight. We don't know what happened. We don't know. I mean, this could be a, a, you know a wide range of things at this point. Obviously, our job is to figure out what happened, and that's what we're going to do. So uh, the quicker we can get there, though, you know, if there's a oh, there's hope, right? There's always hope that they're okay and we have to get so. them home safely and that so. and, and it's possible. There's a range of possibilities. So our, our our job is to try to resolve this as quickly as possible. There's a whole bunch of us working on this and we will day and night until we resolve it. So but in the meantime, you you're you're in a unique position. I know that's right. The babies, man, the babies, that woman, like that whole situation. Like that is I'm here because of those three. And her unborn, but I'm here for those three. But I'm also here because I, I am in a position. I really want to help you guys. Well, we appreciate that. I think oh, it's yeah. obvious. I mean, we we can sense. You know, anybody can sense sitting here help that you do care. Yeah. And that so. and that yeah, there's little there's little girls involved. There's babies involved here. And we all want to see them home safely. Mm -hmm. So so again, if you are in in his life, that is a issue. So there are certain things that you might say you wouldn't say to somebody else, or there might be something that you could find out about that somebody else, nobody else could. So we'll have to see how that goes and how see how the investigation progresses. Um, so we may reach back out to you. But uh, for now, just my main thing would be is if you hear from him and, and you think you should tell us about it, please call me. If you think of something else that happened, even if you think, you know what, it's really not that significant, but maybe I should have mentioned it, please call me and tell me. Because every little piece can help. You know, one of the things, I, I'm not even sure that I asked you this, but is there any particular places that you guys ever went that stood out? Did you have a special place that you wanted to go with you to go for a walk or to go, you know, view the sites or anything like that? Every place that we went was, like, my idea. And I think all of it was special to him because I really took time to go to places that he would like. But it was all stuff that I picked okay. every yeah. time. Like, dinner, dinner. Like, any any place we went, like, it was something that I picked. It was like, hey, I know you like this. What do you think? And he was always all about it. But, like, going camping was my idea. You know, we went out a couple other times. My idea. Like, all of it was my idea. He was all about it. So he just wanted to spend time. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he cared where it was at. Okay. okay. Well, if something jumps out, if you think about a camping trip or something, and, and something that was said or something that was somehow significant about that, again, you know, feel free to give a call. Let me know. Uh, because, again, we just don't know. That's one of those things where somebody might actually be a neighbor, a coworker, somebody might have a piece of information that makes the difference in the case. So, And you may have that, that piece of information. You just don't know yet. Um, obviously, we're going to be interviewing everybody, everybody from family, friends, coworkers, you know, people like that line. So we got a lot of work to do, but we really appreciate you reaching out. And hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this quickly. Where's he at? 
right now, I don't know. I know that he's been interviewed uh, in Frederick uh, by the police there, and he's probably going to be interviewed again, maybe multiple times, uh, by family members as well. I think that he had some friends he was going to stay with. Uh, if they wanted to, you know, we wanted to look at the house. So he, I don't even know if he's gone back to the house or if he's with friends. I, I honestly don't. But he may reach out to you. I mean, it's one of these things in a, in a situation like this. You tend to reach out to the people who are closest to you um, and, and, and want to, you know, want to talk about things. So, what am I supposed to do with that? If, if, if he does call you, obviously we would like to know anything and everything that he says. Because, again, he may tell you something that he's not telling us. And also, even something that may seem obvious to you, if he told us something opposite, it's important. So if he said, I'm staying at Joe's house, and he tells you he's staying at Chris's house or Bob's house or whatever, and that's not true, well, then that could be significant. You know, if he tells you that he went someplace and he didn't go there, that could be significant. So even though you, if, you, if you do have contact with him and you think it's just a normal conversation, there could be something that's significant about that. So, uh, not yet. Not yet. That's one of those things. Right. And we're not going to ask you to do that at this point. I mean, we have a lot of investigative avenues. We have a lot of things that we can do. I know this is difficult for you, and I don't want to make anything uh, more stressful than it already is. So right now, I would just say sit tight. The most valuable thing you can do is just think of anything else that might be useful and let us know. And then if he contacts you, I, I would say it's okay to hear what he has to say. And if you could say what that is, that could be very helpful. You know, one of these things is if, if, if something if something happened that shouldn't have happened, there's usually a mistake, right? There's usually something that's said or something that's done that, that comes out. So even things that seem completely innocent, they actually are. Is it going to get worse? Do you know? I'm just curious. Well, like, I here, just want to know now because it's like yeah. I've been living this whole thing and I'm like, was it a lie? I don't know. Like, when I found out that she had a baby on the way, I was like, it just, it made me, like, wonder. I just don't know. Well, so I can tell you this. Phil and I have not talked. I I haven't even seen him other than him on the news. So I don't know specifics. We probably have 50 people, I would guess. Is that accurate? Working on this right now? Okay, and it, it may it may want to be 100 people by the end of the day. So, there's different different investigators doing different things. So I don't necessarily know what's going on with him. And our focus is just to check all the boxes as quick as possible so we can get all the facts. So I don't know. You know, so I don't know if he was really getting divorced, if they were really going to separate, if they were really sell the house. I don't know the answers. So we'll find out. We'll find out soon. And actually, a good point. Do you have any other questions for us? Is there anything I'm we can... Sad. I'm so sad about the situation. I just want them to find all three of them, like, alive and happy and well and everything. just gone. Everybody to go. Well, we greatly appreciate it. I would say thank you very much. Hang in there. I know this isn't easy. This is a difficult situation. Right. So hang in there. If I hear anything, I will reach out to you. Okay? I just... I don't know how quickly that's going to happen. Uh, in the meantime, again, feel free to reach out. And, uh, and if, if you feel like taking a phone call, you take a phone call. If it's a text message, you can, you can do that. That's up to you. I'm not going to direct you at this time uh, to do anything. But if, if it comes to that, we'll think that that might be helpful. Then we'll reach back out. Just me, I would say texting because it's in writing and you don't have to get personal. But that's just me. I mean, I asked him but to leave I, me alone. He's pretty yeah. respectful of the things that I have to say to him, so I think it's pretty hard for him to have me not talking to him, so at some point, if he caved, if he did try to talk to me, it wouldn't surprise me, but if he also respected what I had to say and, like, continued to give me space, I think he would respect that, too. I mean, I told him numerous times before day that I was scared, so I don't know what it's like. So I don't know. I don't know how he interpreted that. But, but 
we'll, we'll see as it, you know, as time goes on. Um, but, uh, but that, that's it for now. And again, we'll, we'll reach back out to you if need be. One thing, actually, I did want to ask you to call the phone again. So the text messages between you and Yeah, I, that was yesterday. So I found out and he was honest with me. Like, we talked a couple more times after that. And I was just like, I don't want you to contact me. And I just wiped him out. If, if, if that's something that became necessary for us to try to retrieve, is that something that would be okay with you? Uh, I'm sure we could work on my phone records, but I use that phone for work, so I'd appreciate it if I could, like, keep this. Is there another way for you guys to go about doing yeah. that, like, you know, through the phone company yeah. or something? So there's special software we can plug your phone into, and even if it's uh, deleted, you can still retrieve the contact, oh, okay. content, rather. Um, and then just yeah, preserve that and give the phone back. That's... So, of course, yeah. that should be decided. So you're not going to, like, take it from me, though, right? Because I just need it for work. Yeah, no, no, okay. we're not, we're, we don't okay. need to, like, take your phone and if you don't get it back. I mean, yeah. there is a process about getting the information from the phone, but we have people who do that. Right now, and and it, it wouldn't be a big intrusion. Okay. But it just, and, and you think about this, too, right? Because if you think after this exam, you think, okay, you know what, that text message that he wrote, you know, that was a little strange. And maybe we do that. You know, we do that. But, but for now, I don't know that it's necessary. But if it becomes necessary, we may come back to you and say, hey, can we just take a look at your phone? You know, and we'd like to retrieve those text messages. Uh, and again, it may not even be the content. It may just be the time and location. Right. So, well, and so. I mean, as long as you guys will give it back. I mean, that's one sure. thing. I, just, yeah. like, I don't need it for work. I don't even pay for it. I'm going to go through this. So okay. I can't really just, like, not have that big problem. Did you have a work phone and a personal phone? Yes. Do you have numbers for both? Uh, I mean, I just look up his work phone number on the right directory thing for... Did he contact you on both? The first couple times that we talked for a few days, it was on his work phone, but then it shifted to his personal phone. So I was like, I don't want any personal conversation on that work phone, because we're pretty separated at work, and I'm trying to keep it that way at work. I don't think anybody at work even knows that we both talk. Like, we're not affiliated with each other. Okay. Yeah, if we could get uh, both numbers, that'd be great, just to uh, make sure that we have them. I don't know how to do that on here. <laughs> I think there's, like, a directory in here somewhere on my thing. How do you, you smash it? <laughs> One of those broken screen screen favors. You have his personal cell phone. Yes, yeah. that's what's okay. saved in my phone. I don't have his work phone saved in my phone. Okay. I was and hoping I, I that know. I could look it up on my work directory because it's like linked to my, my email, I think, but... Well, that's it. We're gonna, actually, can, can we get that from just his personal number? I'm sure we have it already, but can we just get that? Yeah, just and then the, the work phone, we'll get that from work. Yes. We can get that. Yeah. 910 oh. Zero okay. That's the number that you have. Okay. And then one more question as far as, because I know you were doing the social media thing, but did you have an email address that you guys were in contact? No email? I think we had like one email, but it wasn't like us talking. It was just like, I was just trying to help the equipment that I operate and they use the field, like a gas monitor kind of thing. So just that, it was like a quick talk, but like pretty much everything that we've had has been like on this picture. Like I said, I did say like one email, I don't even remember exactly what I have to do with the gas Something was wrong with the gas monitors, so I think he came to me about that. And then um, I think we, we talked a few times on his work phone, and then it was like, no. Because at that point it was still professional, but I... I knew that it was like getting to the point where it was going to be a personal thing. I was like, we should be a work phone. So that's not fair to me. And this is like my work phone and my home phone, but it's mine. Right. 
So I only have one. Yeah. So I mean, any correspondence that would be of like that kind of relationship. Okay. Fair enough. And, and actually, I don't know what I asked in the beginning because I don't. I just. I. Your full name. <laughs> I know it's Mickey, but wow. is it Kessing? Well, we we came right down once you call Kess yeah. Kessinger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I C H O L. Yes. And then uh, you did work. Well, I put That's it. Can you think of anything else? I think I just gave you guys everything that was on my mind. So. Okay. So I did a good job asking you lots of questions. Hopefully, hopefully I gave you something <laughs> that you can use. Just wanted to accelerate because of the babies. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, and and that's, that's, we don't know them, but yep, there's somebody out there. As long as you're safe, we're cool with it. But, yeah. Ooh. You know, and that's the main reason we get involved. Anytime yeah. there's a missing kid, uh, you know, local agencies can reach out to us for additional manpower, essentially. So, I yep. always want to get that resolved as quickly as possible. Absolutely, yeah, and that's the key. And I can tell you this: we're doing everything it takes. So, all the more clues, the faster it gets. Hopefully, right, right. that's exactly, exactly right. The that's why we thought we'd get through. We do that. So, yeah. right. No, and I, and I think your your information is very helpful. It also gives us a lot of insight too, which is helpful. To that. So. Understood. All right. Understood. Well, so you guys with the local or with the feds? We're feds. We're both FBI okay. agents. So we're just okay. helping out yep. with the yeah. That's a small. Yeah. Frederick's a small yeah. PD. Uh, you yeah. know, a case like this requires a lot of manpower. Yeah. I used to do water treatment plants up there in uh, Erie and oh, yeah. all of those. And man, they, they would just, there's not enough. A lot going on in those towns, and you know, all those. It's not overcrowded, no traffic, no. I mean, it's a lot. There's no people. It's a lot smoother way of life. So I couldn't imagine that they would have 50. Well, it's that's just a we, one detective and a few patrol officers. Yeah, so. it's, yeah. that's, and that's one of the ways that we can help, just because we have a lot of people with resources. Good. Good to know. Yeah. All righty. Well, I'm sorry about the mosquito bites as well. Yes. I know I've decided as long as you got it, you to go it with. Like they're they're fine, and you and I are getting better. Yeah, yeah. So that's fine. Right. 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 Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.